Hello everybody, this is Jared Chunks 21 bringing you another Pokemon video. So, I got the inspiration from this from asking some buddies of mine on the Silver League Networks. This is a face reveal because I don't have anything in the background to discuss, so I thought I'd do it. In case you're wondering, I am wearing a uh, Million Ways to Die in the West t-shirt that comes with the box set. Or that came with the box set, uh, says mustachery. I think it's pretty funny because I, all I have is what my, uh, dad calls peach fuzz. Or, as my advisors call, a 70s porn star mustache. So, uh, I thought I'd jump into this. I have a couple of honorable mentions. Actually, I have one. So, in Gen 3, we got the ability to dive. And you could dive down and then sur and swim around. The name of this video is Top 10 Areas in Pokemon, the games that were largely forgotten by Game Freak or the player base. Either we skipped over it or we zoomed through it if it was mandatory to go to it, looking for whatever we wanted. So, I wanted to go in with this, and our honorable mention is the underwater area. And the reason why is... You know, you had to go there if you were trying to get the Reggies, so I added it to the honorable mentions because it does have a part in the game, but most of us just didn't want to do it. We didn't hunt for Mons in it, we just went there to go to Slateport or uh, Pseudopolis to try to get the submarine and whatnot, so that's our honorable mention. I want to jump into this one, number 10. Uh, these are in no direct order, these are just where they came up at. So we can go with Johto, and I think we're all a little guilty of this. It is the Whirlpool Islands. The World Islands. I think we all bypassed a lot of the islands themselves to try to find Lugia. Sure, we might have went back and explored them, but the goal was to find Lugia, so we skipped it. We went right through, we bypassed the ones. Some of us who had access to it, we went to our computer found out what island exactly we had to go to to get to Lugia, and we bypassed every other one of them. So, that's number 10 on our list. Number 9 is going to be one that, until the remakes you didn't get access to, it is another Johto game, it is the Safari Zone. And the reason this was, is in Gen 2, you know, they got rid of the Safari Zone. They said... Let's get rid of that. There was too many glitches and hacks with it, and that's a corruption, a corruption in the files and everything from Gen 1. So Game Freak just wrote it out. And when we finally got it in the remakes, we kind of... I explored through it, and it, to me it seemed a little half-assed. It seemed like they weren't really trying on it. So, that was the big one. That was the other one for Johto. There is one more on here for Johto. But we're going to jump to number 8, which is Gen 7. Gen 7 was widely explored. We all, you know, I remember a couple of the rumors. You had the Ultra Beast, which brought us back to areas that some of us didn't bother exploring. So, and the Zygarde Quest. So we all explored through there. And uh, one area that I think... I've seen a lot of people that do Let's Plays skip over. I myself spent, I think, two to three days hunting in it for one particular Pokemon. Now, I'm going to move the camera a little bit, and I, I'm sorry, this is, I'm going to get up in your guys' face really quickly. I'm just going to move your, move the camera over here a little bit, and uh, show you what's in that aquarium, which is a turtle that I have had since I was five named Jappy. And he got that name because he bit me when I first got him. I was about five years old. I also have a little stuffed turtle my parents got me when I was a baby, when I was really young. I still have him. Sorry, my camera is being a little weirdo. Right there. So, uh, as you can see right here, it's a little Thai beanie baby. So, I'm a big fan of reptiles. In every game, I will start my first playthrough with whatever Pokemon most resembles a reptile. If I can't find one, I go with my gut. So in Gen 7, we got the leak of uh, Turtonator. And I loved it. 
I loved the idea of it. I loved it. I went out and got one. It took me two to three days hunting through the power plants Pokemon to actually find one. Now, I found that a lot of people seem to bypass this because there's very... You're looking for a very specific Pokemon when you go there. So to me, I found that a little irritating. I thought, you know, it's the 20th anniversary. The place that I'd be looking at is the power plant because in Gen 1, you know, that's where you got Zapdos. So a lot of people skipped the power plant. A lot of my friends at school said they did. They just bypassed it up completely if they could. So that's number eight. Number seven is going to be an area in Gen 6. I heard uh, Silver August discuss it. And I've heard a couple other Yugi, uh, Pokemon, Poketubers, sorry, Poketubers mention it. And it is the Sea Spirits Den in Gen 6. Now, for me, I couldn't even figure out how to get into this place. I had to watch gameplay of it, and that's when I realized this, all it is is a little maze. There's no real catch. There's no legendary at the end of it. There's no master ball at the end of it. There's no really rare, valuable object at the end of this. It's just a little maze. And to me, that showed that Game Freak, they built the maze, but they didn't know what to put at the end of it. And Game Freak has been known to do this before. They did this in Gen 4 with the, uh, I want to say Reversal Mountain, but I'm not, I'm not sure about the name. I'm not sure. It's where you were supposed to find, uh, oh, what is it? It's a little late at night. It's about midnight where I am right now, so I'm a little tired. Uh, Giratina. That's it. Uh, it's where you're supposed to find Giratina and Diamond and Pearl, but not in Platinum. And uh, they built the whole maze around it, and I don't think I've ever heard of anyone actually finding Giratina at the end of that maze. They built it. Game Freak's been known to do this. They start the idea and they build the maze and they uh, they don't put the end result that we all were wanting. They don't put, well, there's no legendary, there's no master ball, there's no rare golden egg, there's nothing. There's, you know, I've found that a lot of video gamers, when they do it long enough, they see this maze and their immediate thought is, okay, Someone worked really hard on this. They worked really hard on that maze. They worked really hard on that project. They obviously have hidden something in there, and I want to find it. And you go through the maze. Sometimes it'll take you two or three tries. Sometimes it'll take you 20. Sometimes it'll take you more. And you realize, wait a minute, there's nothing valuable here. I went through all this trouble for nothing. And, uh, that... That kind of pisses me off. I actually do not like it when video game companies do that. Whatever your original idea is for that maze, follow through. Pull the trigger, bite the bullet, take a bite. And that goes with a saying that, as an explorer, I picked up on. My advisors like to use it. It's a... Life's a shit sandwich. You gotta take a bite. It's your call. But you're gonna have to take a bite. And I think... More people need to get used to doing that. If your idea, if you like your idea enough to build the area and spend the manpower to do it and put it off the beaten trail, then pull the trigger. Do what you were planning. But that's number seven is the Gen 6 Sea Spirit Den. Now we move to one of my least favorite generations, both for the anime and for the games. I felt the games were crappy as shit, but I liked the idea of them. I like the, I like the idea of them, but it was the fact that it had broken all conventional norms. And let's also not forget, because Gen Five is, I really could not get into the anime. Gen Five was the anime where I stopped watching the anime altogether. I watched Gen One, Gen Two, Gen Three, Gen Four, all the way to Gen Five. And the minute I got about 10 episodes in, and I got to, I think it's about 10 episodes in, I got to the episode where Iris says, you're such a kid, 
like seven or eight different times in the anime episode in a 30 minute period and I'm just like, no, I'm done with this, this is bullshit. And I clicked off. I could not stand it. I'm very vocal about that if you're part of the Silver League Network on Facebook. I'm very vocal about how much I hate the, uh, how much I hate that anime. How much I hate Gen 5. And I've been told that there's separations. There's best wishes and then there's black and white and whatnot. I can't get into any of them. If Iris is in it, all I think of is that she's going to keep saying that stupid line and it pissed me off. That's the laziest excuse for writing I have ever heard. And I don't even write my own stuff. This is unscripted. I'm, this is going by ear. I mean, what I'm looking down at right now is the list of the areas so I don't get off track and don't forget. Because I do have a bad memory. But for Gen 5, the games, the area that I just zoomed through and didn't bother exploring like I do in most games, even if I hate the game, I explore a little bit, I did not bother with the desert. And that could be the same for Gen 3. I did not like the desert in Gen 3. Now, I sort of got into it a little bit when I got, when I saw Cacnea and Trap Inch. I love Trap Inch. I love me some Flygon. But, Gen 5, I skipped the desert. I got through that, and I finished. I was done with it. The thing that upset me the most with Gen 5 is, they really went lazy with this one. If you look back, you have Gen 1 all the way to Gen 4, you have the two main games. So, for instance, Gen 4, you have Diamond and Pearl, and then you have Platinum which has the best of all of them. Gen 5 did something stupid and asinine. They did black, white, black and white, and then, brace yourselves for this, they did black and white too. And that to me just screamed like you were running out of ideas. You were grasping at straws. Now, a couple of Silver League members suggested this idea. A couple of them are probably going to watch this. I want to apologize to you guys, I know. I'm probably making the group look like idiots, but their views do not reflect on me. I hate Gen 5, that's all there is to it. So now we gotta go into Gen 4. And I kinda like Gen 4. I'm still a Gen 3 fanboy to my to the heart, as you can tell by my intro, which is the shiny black Rayquaza, which there's a story behind that. I believe I already mentioned it on my last Pokemon video. Uh, so Gen 4, I do believe, I did a little bit of research, I'm not sure if it's true or not. Uh, Gen 4, one of the areas that was event only was the Flower Paradise where you got Shaman. You could only get Shaman with the Flower Paradise. And the same goes with the flute. The Azula flute or Azuril flute or whatever it's called. Game Freak had the idea, we're going to have these two items. And you can use these items to get Shaman and Arceus. And it's going to be amazing. And we're going to start our own casino. It's going to have Blackjack and Hookers. Well, guess what? We didn't get the casino and we didn't get Arceus and Shaman here in America. They released it to Japan and they said, no, we're done with it. We're done with it. Scrap it. Goodbye. Done. Finito. Bye-bye. And it's a shame. I would love, now the only way for us in America to actually go to the Flower Paradise and explore is to use glitches, hacks, or devices, such as hacks in root place. And I count hacks as different. Hacks, to me, is something you do with a computer. Devices are your action replay, your game shark. God, I'm dating myself by mentioning game shark. Stuff like that. And glitches are, of course, well, glitches. Uh, so, that's Gen 4. So that's number 5 on our list. Number 4 is going to be the one area in Gen 3 I cannot accept. Now, I love Gen 3 to death. I've loved it. It's very hard. If you tell me to pick my very favorite Pokemon from Gen 3, I will have issues. I made a list about it, but I had to really work hard because I've played through Gen 3... God knows, 40, 50 different times. And some of the mons that are always on my team are Salamence, Flygon, Raquaza, whatever box art legendary, so Groudon and Kyogre. Um, I usually have a, one of the starters, just depends. 
I think Gen 3 had a really good idea, really good premise with their starters. Every gen I have a go-to starter, but Gen 3 is the only one where I could give a shit less. If, the, if Game Freak install, redid Gen 3 again, which they never will, but if they did, and they said, okay, everyone gets a random starter. You don't get to pick your starter. Now you've got a, we randomly number, we use random number generator and we pick. Do you get Mudkip? Do you get Sept? Uh, do you get Trico? Do you get Torchic? I'd be happy with no matter what one I got, because I love them all. But, Gen 3, the one area in it that I can never forgive is Mount Pyre. I just couldn't get into it. You're forced to go there during the story mode. It's just this little island in the middle of, the, of a lake, I assume. And... For the most part, I just don't like it. It's not original. It's To me, it's a rip-off of uh, the Ghost Tower. The Pokemon Tower in Gen 1. So I can never get into it. And I still can't. But. That's really the biggest area in Gen 3 that I can't stand. Underwater, I kind of liked it because I, I, I got into the hunt for Reclanath. At the time, I was, you know... I wanted to do, when Gen 3 first came out, I wanted to do the whole uh, turtle researcher, reptiles, reptile thing. And I decided, you know, I wanted to do, I, I like the idea of an ancient fish Pokemon. I just liked it. Um, so Gen 3's Mount Pyre is the only one that I could come up with for Gen 3. A lot of these are meant to be from different gens. Johto's got the models, but... Really, there's no... I couldn't really come up with a good counter-argument for Johto. But we're going to go into the third one. And this is for the remakes of Johto. And this is for uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And it is the Sinjo Ruins. It is a rushed event. And nowadays, you can't even really get it. I have a copy of Soul Silver over there. In fact... Let me get up and get it. I'm sorry about this, guys. I know I'm getting a little off track here, but... You know... I'm still new to the whole PokeTubing thing. Or YouTube in general. So, I wanted to do this kind of thing. So, as you can see there... Copy of Soul Silver. And I'm not going to lie. I went through a lot. I got this on one of my vacations with my mom up to Indiana, and we I went through every GameStop in Indiana. I called every single one to see if they had one. Nope, they're all they they're all out. I called every GameStop in the town I live in and the adjacent towns I live in down here in North Carolina. Nope, we ain't got any. I ended up calling all. We go through Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, and North Carolina to get up to Indiana to see family. And uh, I called every single GameStop along the route we travel, and none of them had it. Finally, I go out on a limb. There's a really small, out-of-the-way town in Kentucky. I don't even remember where it is. But it, I, I mean, it's really small. I call up the GameStop. I'm like, hey, do you have Pokemon Soul Silver? Yeah, man, we got like two copies, three copies of it. Can you reserve me one? I'll be down there in like two days. Yeah, what's your name? John Finley. Okay, thank you. And yes, I did just give you guys my real name. So, what ends up happening is... We went down there, and I think I spent like maybe 20 bucks on this. The, game, the GameStop had it really cheap. Yeah, I mean, compared to what I was seeing online to buy it. So, I really wanted this, and it's because I had seen the video where you could do the Arceus event, and the Sinjo Ruins, and the Celebi event. Now, I've done both. I've done the Arceus and the Celebi event using a game, a cheating device. And I loved it. I loved every single second of this. I loved the idea of the Sinjo Ruins. The only thing I didn't like was that it's nowhere mentioned in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and in the original Johto games. They just sprung it on for the remakes. And that, to me, makes no sense. 
you know, if you want to build up the people buying this, buying these copies of these games, you advertise during the other games. But that's, that's just me. Gen 2, the second one, number 2 on our list, and Gen 2's get number 1 pick, and it ties into the Sinjo Ruins. And if any of you have played the remakes, you know what I'm talking about. The Ruins of Alpha. I'm not a big fan of any area that is a major part of the map that you go to during the main storyline or travel through frequently during the main storyline being used for just one Pokemon. And yes, I am counting unknown as one Pokemon. Maybe 26 letters, but they're one Pokemon. And that is why the ruins about for where they are. The creepy music's cool as shit. I love it. But I would have preferred if they added more mons to the list of stuff you can encounter in the caves. And Gen 1. And this is an area I'm sure most of you forgot about. Route 18. Right off the bicycle road. When you come up to the little building as you're exiting uh, Safari, the bicycle road to Fuchsia City, where Koga is, there's a little grass patch down there. I know I sure as hell have forgotten to do it most times. Because there's nothing there. There's a couple trainers. You can find a Mux, some Firo, etc. How many of you forgot to travel that area? Because I'm willing to bet a lot of you did. There's nothing there. There's no reason to. Now I'm sure in the main games in Gen 1 when you first played through, if you were a little kid, you're like, Oh, hot damn! I'm going to go all through the map. And that's why I had issues picking an area for Gen 1. But Gen 1, I have found that Route 18 is the most negligent area. I barely explore it anymore. Even in the remakes, I barely explore it. So, this was part of the reason I... This was part of the reason why that's there. This is a biased video. This is my experience. These are in no way, shape, or form... Reflective of the rest of the Pokemon community. I'm sure some of you guys can agree you bypass some of these areas. I know most of us have. But, as I said, this came from an idea from a person on the Silver League Networks. He suggested this idea because I wanted to do another Pokemon video and I couldn't think of any. So if you liked the video, leave a like. Comment, subscribe, and share. I will leave a link. Uh, check out the Silver League's YouTube channel because I don't feel comfortable advertising for their Facebook page here on mine as I'm not an actual admin for the Silver League. I am a part of them. They got me into competitive battling, but I don't feel comfortable advertising for them. So, check out their, their YouTube channel. If any of you guys on the Silver League watch this, any of you admins, keep up the good work. You guys inspired the channel. A lot of people, a lot of YouTubers inspired this channel, actually. For the Pokemon videos, it's mostly the Silver League that inspired this. For the Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff, I can't begin to list all the Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTubers who inspired my channel. And I've already explained who inspired the Fallout 4 and GTA videos. So, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check out the Patreon. Again, any money you donate to the Patreon goes into the channel. I'm sure some of you guys are probably tired of the webcam. You're tired of me doing this with no real visual effects or anything like that. Or any specialty stuff. I'm just going to show you what this is. This is what I'm using. I'm literally using Movie Maker to do these videos. So, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. So, I do appreciate any help I can get from you guys. And keep up the good work.